Hey guys, as promised, I have the uh, Takahashi 102 TSA out. Right now I have it on the EQ6, ready to go. It's been cooling down. I'm not exactly sure. My guess is probably 30, 35 minutes, uh, roughly, which is not too bad for a four inch refractor. Even though it's a triplet, it doesn't really need long. It's nice and clear. You can see Jupiter there. And I'm not sure if you can see Saturn uh, on the cell phone, but it's there. So I called two people over that live like within 10 minute drive of me and are in the hobby as well. I mean, they're not as professional as me, but I thought they would like to take a look through the scope. One I'm not sure, and one is on his way. So anyway, um, let's start. Maybe I'll start visual and uh, we'll wait for them to come and then get their opinion. Since Saturn is a bit low, I raise a tripod pretty high and I only have right now a 32 millimeter regular palazzo, super palazzo, sorry. That's uh, so nothing too fancy and there we go. So let's look at, Sa oh, I think I already got it. Yep, it's in the field of view. Uh, my friend Eddie, who had this scope, put a 7x50 Takahashi finder scope. I almost never use finder scopes uh, because as you saw, it literally took me one second or half a second to find. So I normally don't use finder scopes at all except for like ride gels and tail rads. I just need to get to the area, low power eyepiece and boom. Let me open the gate in case. Okay, let me just center. Oh, I can already see Titan. On the right side it's very small with 32 millimeter eyepiece so let's jack up the power let me put a mead 4000 series ultra wide angle 6.7 and let me center it again wow that's sharp tack sharp the eq6 holding it easily and it's not a question let me go see how much this is as far as power. 816 millimeter focal length. So 816 divided by 6.7 was 122 power. Ah, that's nothing. So let's do this one. 816 divided by 4.7 brings it up to 174. Much better. Should still be in the field of view. Yeah. Now remember, Saturn is not, I think I'm gonna raise the tripod even higher to its fullest because I'm bending down quite a bit and I'll find it again after. Much better. Right to a 4.7, is it still gonna be there? Yep, pretty much dead center. 174 power. This should be able to do 204, so I can even push it more. I believe I'm at three millimeters. Yep, I'm, this is three millimeters. Actually looks very good. I think that's huge power. 816 divided by three. 272 power with a four inch refractor. That's, I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna put the eye cup down. Yeah, this is 272 power. I wish I had a dual speed focuser, but this one's very nice. Okay, so that's an amazing shot considering this is like uh, almost twice as Remember, theoretical power says 202 power on this guy, which is maximum, and everybody always tends to stay lower. Then I tell people stay about 15% under maximum because nothing can really do maximum most of the time, right? It's just like your car is how I explain to people. If it does like 300, you're not gonna do 300, you stay under. Just as an example uh, type of thing. So if this guy's 202 and now I'm at 272, 70 power, above what it can do and if I shield my eye and just wait pretty rock steady even though there's a slight wind it's primed by at least uh what is it guys at least two months now nah, maybe two and a half months already it's past its prime 
You can still see it, but it's not as big or as close as. Okay, so right now I'm just using a 13 millimeter Nagler and that's it. And then I'm blowing it on the screen. I'm not really sure how many times. And um, that's what I'm getting. Remember, it's far away right now. That's about 174 power. That's pretty good. Yeah? Think so? Yeah. You know, I've ever seen it. <laughs> okay. That's the best you've ever seen it? Oh yeah. Did you have to focus it or it looks pretty good? Um, no, I, I didn't. Okay, it's not perfect it. to me. So let me focus it and then put you... Okay, try that. To me, that looks like perfect focusing. I'm not sure if your eye, though, is the same as mine. It looks good. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to blow it up even more. Because before you came, I took it up... Well, as you know, this is 102 millimeters. Yeah. So the maximum should be 202. Right. I had it up to 272 and it still looks still good. Good, yeah. And this is it's exactly set to that. So you tell me if it looks good at that power. And imagine if it was like two months ago, three months ago, right? Obviously going past its maximum might be a little less sharp. Try that. To me that looks, that's 272 power. That's good. I'd say that's pretty sharp. See the ring's really well. Yeah, yeah. Remember too that you know the ring is kind of closing up. Right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, and I mean it is what it is. So imagine like two, three months ago if we would have done this, you know. Oh yeah. Yeah. And I could see Titan right there on the side. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully you like that. That's about as big as I can go. Oh, it was nice. Like was uh, with a four-inch refractor. So let's go try a Jupiter out now. You tell me what you think. Jupiter, of course, is, well, it, it probably is one month past opposition, so not as bad, but uh, definitely way better than uh, the position of uh, Saturn. So it's a small image, but you can see the moons. Take a look at that. Look how big that is. That's 174 power. You just keep looking. You can see the two bands. Yeah. Yeah, that looks good. The cloud just came in right there, like right where Saturn yeah. is, figures. Well, I, was, so, I was a little worried when you uh, texted me. I looked out my back window and there was all kinds of clouds coming in. Oh, okay, yeah. Let me try a filter. I want to see if it enhances it a little bit. I haven't put filters in a long, long time. Yeah, it makes it like a weird color, like bluish. Yeah. But I can see the stripes a little bit more definition. Well, it's a little blue, but yeah, you can see more of the stripes. See the stripes, but yeah. Let's see if we can push it more, like that other eyepiece, and see if Jupiter holds. I don't know if it's Jupiter going to be good at 272 power, but it's going to try. What, what do you think? You can see the stripes quite well. Okay. Let's put the blue filter back on. I think I can see the great red spot. The top uh, band, and it's closer to the edge. Um, but I think I see it. Could be imagining it. Do you think the bed, right, it's sometimes that's how it is, you know what I mean? It's it's on the threshold of like, kind of hard to tell. So. Yeah. I think, I'm pretty sure I see it. It's, it's at the top, like the top stripe, yeah. Yeah. very close to the edge. Because I see something more, it's darker for me. Right. Is that the best you've ever seen it? Oh, certainly from the telescope it is. Yeah, okay. Far, far so far. both of them, Jupiter and Saturn, that's yeah. the best. You, okay. So maybe next year we got to look at Saturn when it's at its prime. Yeah. yeah. Now you also took a look at the uh, Takahashi four-inch. What yeah. did you think, Jupiter and Saturn, on that? They were better on that. Okay, better. Yeah, I thought they were uh, more crisp. Okay. okay. Fair. Enough. And do you think I'm going to put you on the spot, but. When I do the video of that one, what did you, how would you rate that? I mean, have you ever seen Jupiter and Saturn as good? Or? Never, never, not in any of my telescopes. Your no. telescopes, okay. But uh, pretty good, would you say? 
I, I was impressed with them. Okay, okay. And just so you guys know, we're in mid-December, so Saturn has already been past its prime at least two and a half months ago, at least maybe even three months ago, I think. Jupiter still, I think, past its prime, but it's still pretty good viewing. But um, thanks for coming out. I hopefully you enjoy that. Yep, absolutely. You know, yeah, so anyway, guys, like, comment, and subscribe. There is, you know, you guys saw the Takahashi. I didn't put uh, Jupiter in the video for you, but maybe I can a little bit later tonight because Jupiter is still overhead pretty high. And uh, like, comment, and subscribe. This is Joe Jaguar and Albert. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Hey guys, so it's the next night from yesterday's test and it's another clear night out there. And we're gonna be using the Takahashi 102 TSA again because I didn't record uh, Jupiter on the eyepiece. Today looks like it's actually more clear, there's Jupiter, than yesterday. It feels like it's a little bit more windy than yesterday. So let's see if the condition is better. And I just see the little bit of the moon, the crescent moon right there. So, Today I'm going to be using an EQ5 uh, with two inch steel legs, which is still more than enough. You don't need an EQ6 for, uh, you know, four inch refractor. So we're just going to give it a try. Okay guys, so I just quickly put in the 32 millimeter and now I'm at the 4.7. Today is much better than yesterday. Much better. I'm talking about 50% uh, more, more better. I could it's sharp like tack sharp the planet casting a shadow this is the kind of view that i remember out of this scope now i'm only at a um i believe this was like 172 174 power with the 4.7 meat ultra wide this looks like a textbook well unfortunately that uh, friend albert that was here yesterday he got a good view but today's view I think is like 50% better. I think he would have been blown away with uh, what he would see today. I'm going to the same power as yesterday, 272 power. I could even see some banding on, this kind of looks like the Hubble. I'm, I'm sorry if I seem too uh, excited, but this is how I remember this guy. Now mind you, Saturn is way past opposition. So I could imagine if I had this guy like three months ago, Eddie, I'm gonna kill you. What's going on is it's not really tracking. I mean, I got the RA drive here. So it's supposed to track on the one axis, but I feel like it's not. Should have put that tripod all the way up so I'm not bending as much down. I can clearly see the Cassini division, even though it's getting really like closing up. I can clearly see it. Unfortunately, okay, the drive isn't working. The good thing is I could just slip clutch it. Well, maybe the button is not. Uh, should be south, north. Maybe the button's not activating it, but at least, oh my God, that view is amazing. I can see like a big banding. All the, the whole top is a different color than the middle. Cassini division is sharp. The ring is like tack sharp, pinpoint. I'm gonna try to put it on the cell phone, but remember, we're only talking about a cell phone. We're talking about Saturn that's been past its opposition three months ago. So I'll see what I can do. This EQ5, the tracking is not working. It turns on, it feels the motor is going, but for some reason, it's not working. So there's no point. For me to have that high power view and for it, me not to keep on moving it every five seconds on the slow motion control, might as well just get the EQ6. I'll be back. Okay, we got the EQ6 and now I know this big boy is gonna track very well and I can try to show you guys um, a good image, I hope. So let's get to it. Because God knows it's already hard enough trying to do imaging through a cell phone. What do you think of that? I'm just using a 4.7 
mead ultra white okay what do you think of that two times barlow now and the 4.7 i'm only now blowing it up 2.6 times Okay, guys, you can see one moon up on top, two on the bottom, and I think you can even see the fourth, but it's out of the frame right now. This is only a 4.7 ultra-wide angle. I think my focus is great. I think that on, on my cell screen right now, this looks amazing. I know somebody last time said on the 128 that was the best live video that they've seen on YouTube. This looks like it compares.